Welcome everyone again to this series about compilers and programming languages where I'm teaching fundamental concepts of, of compilers and programming languages. And today we're going to look into left uh, recursion elimination in grammars. In a previous video, I showed you how to uh, get rid of some ambiguity by rewriting the grammar, which resulted in the following uh, context-free grammar, where we have a, a, plus, a plus operator, we have a multiplication, and we have numbers. And we can also put parentheses in our expression. So we have addition and multiplication, where the multiplication has higher precedence and then, then plus, and that we have also that the associativity of the of the operators are left associative, but and that is because of the recursion to the left here. Right. So we want to get rid of this left recursion. Why, why do we want that? Well, if you're using a parser uh, generated tool that is using uh, a bottom up like an LR style uh, parsing algorithm uh, using Lex or Jack or something similar, uh, then it's not a problem. But if you're writing your own top down recursive descent parser, then, then it's actually needed. Then you cannot have a left recursion because this recursion here will go into an infinite loop. So you want to get rid of this left recursion uh, when you are doing top-down parsing. And that's what we are going to do today. So we are going to rewrite the grammar where we are eliminate, eliminating the left recursion. So what you do then is to avoid to have this recursion to the left. So we rewrite this expression here into a term. So it starts with a term and then we have another new non-terminal called expression prime. And the prime has no special meaning. It's just another, another name for it. We could have called it expression two if we wanted it. So this expression prime here then, then it starts with a plus. So you see here that the term here would be, for example, a number. And then the expression prime parses the plus. And then comes another term and then expression prime again. So the trick here is to, do, to have actually the recursion to the right. So we get right recursion. And you will see later on that that actually makes it, because we're removing left recursion, we have a problem with associativity if we want left associativity. But I'll come back to that. Right, so we, we have now eliminated the left recursion uh, by having right recursion instead. And we have expression prime here, which can be replaced with an with a empty, empty expression. In the bottom, we have factor. And as you can see, the factor here and here, they are the same. So we don't do anything, and that's because we don't have any recursion at all here that is left recursive. So we don't have to change anything. So now, if you are following this, it might be good actually to do this as an exercise before I show the solution, is to rewrite the term here, this part, into left recursion. And, and it follows the same pattern as I have done here above. So take a positive video and try to do this on pen and paper, and, and then you will, you will learn more if you try to do that. Right. Okay, now I'll show you the solution here for term, and it's basically the same here uh, as for this one, same pattern. So we're having a term, but then instead of going to a term, we go to a factor, and then we invent a new term prime here, where we have the term prime and we have the multiplication, and then to the right here, we have the term prime again, and term prime goes to nothing. So how, how could this actually work? Is, how, how do we know that it gives the same Result. Well, you have to, to work out some examples to, to you know, really to figure this out and convince yourself. Let's continue with an example. To, so the only way to really convince yourself that this is correct is by looking at an example and make a derivation and see that it actually works out. So we'll use this one, uh, 2 plus 3 multiplied by 5 that we used in our previous video. And, and then we start with a non-terminal. So we have a start non-terminal expression. And the only possible uh, replacement here is actually this first one, because we only have expression in one place. So we, we need to replace it with this, this right-hand side. So we get expression term and expression prime. And then we can expand term here. And term also got just one option. So it's this one. You see that the other ones that are term prime. So we expand that one as well. So we get the factor term prime, factor term prime, right? So then we can expand the factor. And what options do we have? We have a number and parentheses, but the first part here is really just a number. 
So we just can replace it with a number. And then after that, what, can, what options do we have for term prime? Well, we have multiplication and nothing, and we get a plus, so we cannot expand to the multiplication. So that means that we have to replace this with nothing, so term prime disappears. Okay, we got this one, the num, and now we are going to ex expand the expression prime. Expression prime got a plus here, term. And so this is the only option because we don't want to have the empty one. We need to get this plus. So we replace it with this one. And then we can expand with a term. So term, we only have this option. So we get this factor term prime. This factor goes down to a number because that's the only thing that we want to have here because we do not have any parentheses. We get this one, so we, this num here corresponds to this num. And then we have term prime. What can we do with term prime? Well, we see here either it's a multiplication, which is really the case what we have here, or a nothing. So we need to expand it to the multiplication with a factor. Then we have the factor again, and this factor is again expanded to a number. And this term prime here, well, we have we are finished. We, we don't have anything else. So we need to replace this term prime with nothing. And then since we have nothing more, this this expression prime here is also replaced with nothing. So what we can see here is that we really did, we managed to parse this using this rewritten uh, grammar that has no left recursion. So we have num plus num multiplied by num. And, and this is actually correct for this expression, right? Because we have a, a, uh, we have a higher precedence of, of multiplication. But this recursion, when we eliminated the left recursion, we were also actually making these, uh, uh, the, the parsing right associative. So you cannot see this in this example because the right is actually because of the precedence. So this is a problem. The new grammar uh, becomes right associative. The precedence is, is correct, but we get a right associativity, even though they, we wanted a left, left associativity. And this cannot be solved directly in the grammar, but instead the trick is that we solve this by when we're writing our recursive descent parser, we are regenerating the left recursion, uh, the left um, associativity when we are creating the AST from the uh, while we are parsing. So I will show that in, in, in an upcoming video. Okay, so I hope that you learned something about elimination and left recursion. Uh, thank you very much for, for listening. If you like this video, please subscribe and add a comment and tell me more about what you want to learn about compilers and programming languages.